Hello and welcome to 5 Year Club video number 67, a short video on dividends. A dividend is a payment made by a corporation to its shareholders used as a distribution of profits. So a company makes money, a company wants to give money to the people who own the company, or the shareholders, and so it literally gives the money out to the shareholders, and that's what a dividend is. Many dividends are reinvested automatically. Uh, when you hold an index fund or something like that and use to buy additional shares of the company. And I think in the long run, they actually contribute to about half of the returns you get from holding a stock, uh, at least you know going back 100 years. Let's talk a little bit about taxes on dividends. Qualified dividends, which qualified is a very specific term, which means that the company and the dividend matches a bunch of rules by the IRS. Those are taxed at the long-term capital gains rate of like 15%. However, if you are in a 10% or 15% tax bracket, which for a single person is making less than $37,950 a year, you will not pay any taxes on dividends. And what that means is that if you design a retirement portfolio where you're living on $3,000 a month or less, so you're realizing $36,000 or less of dividends per year, you won't pay any tax on that income. And I think that's a pretty sweet deal. There are also unqualified dividends and those are taxed at your normal income tax rate, so make sure that your dividends are qualified. I couldn't find any good common examples of unqualified dividends, so just try to make sure that they're qualified. I want to talk a little bit about the history of dividends now. What this graph that you see right now is, is the average dividend yield, or the total dividend yield, of the S&P 500 um, for a long, long time. So. I think it starts around like 1870, 1880, 1890, and what we see over time is that dividends are becoming less popular uh, as a means of returning value to shareholders. You know, they're around like say five or six percent for a really long time until about the 1950s, and then we see a drop down. And in the current environment, we're at 1.82 percent is like how much you would get back in dividends if you're holding the S&P 500. You know, and that's not fabulous because if you're trying to live on a portfolio that's only dividends and all you can pull is 1.82% you know, um, per year, that means that your portfolio needs to be over 50 times bigger than your annual expenses, which means you know, you're going to be needing to hold, uh, instead of $750,000 to have a $3,000 income every month using the 4% rule, rule, you're going to need to be, be uh, invested in over $1.5 million to get that same $3,000 a month if you're dividend returns only 1.82%. Now this is for the entire S&P 500. There are companies in the S&P 500 that have dividends significantly higher than 1.82%. You know, and I, I just went through a list of 10 of them. CenturyLink, 12%. Kimco Realty Corp, 6.5%. Iron Mountain, 6.4%. We see more sixes. We see down to fives. And finally at 10, Seagate Technology with a dividend yield of 5.3%. In theory, you could form a portfolio of, say, these 10 companies, and you'll get a higher dividend yield than 1.82%, and therefore need a portfolio that instead of being, say, 1.5 million, would only need to be like 600,000, 750,000, 800,000, something less. So you'd be able to retire sooner and use nothing but dividends to pay for a $3,000 a month income tax-free. However, it should be noted that holding 10 companies is a lot more risky than hold five, holding 500 companies. And if, you know, CenturyLink is paying a 12% dividend from whenever this data was taken, it's very likely that CenturyLink is not always going to be paying a 12% dividend. There are very few companies that are clever enough to have a business that would be able to pay 12% annually kind of forever and ever. Um, so there's risk there too. Um, and that's the end of today's video. It was just a brief video on dividends and uh, showing you some of the advantages of holding them, what your options are kind of historically what it looks like the trend is going to be going forward, aka they're going to be harder to find. And um, now you know what a dividend is. It is a payment made by a corporation to its shareholders, usually as a distribution of profits. That's it for video number 67. Thank you for watching and have a fabulous evening.